Hey, Jillian, did you see the global warming? Huzzah! Mine eyes don't take an interest in thee. Sit you down and have a laugh. Oh, did you get my stash of ketamine again? Oh, Dan, thou art a strapping young lad. I tell ye the truth. Perchance, a countenance more in sorrow than in anger. You sound like my Uncle Gerard after the accident. Oh, come on, Dan. I went to Medieval Times last night, and it was so much fun. You went to the Medieval Times? Yeah! It's a family dinner theater. It features uh, stage medieval style games, sword fighting, and jousting. They have nine locations all around the world. Medieval Times, copyright 1983. You get to, you get to watch live jousting? Holy crap, that's awesome! <laughs> and eat a turkey leg. Oh. Live from Studio C in the Robert Zemeckis Center, it's The Breakdown! On today's episode, weather, traffic, and quality entertainment. Please welcome your hosts, Dan Toomey and Jillian Rubalcaba. And now, make some noise for the breakdown. It would be so fun, like I'd be a fat princess and you'd be my loyal servant. <laughs> Servant, excuse me, do you see these cheekbones? <laughs> Clearly, I am of noble stock, Jillian. <laughs> Granted, you know, not royalty, I'm not that inbred, but at least, you know, like a duke or a, or a baron or something cool, you know? And you could be the village wench. Okay, we're, that is outright- Silence, wench! I must ponder the future of my fief's grain harvests. And onto the news. Well, <clears throat> sorry. Well, after a three-day weekend to recuperate, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg is back on the Supreme Court bench, and even more importantly, back in the octagon for her next MMA fight. <laughs> Utah legalized medical marijuana this week for treatment of serious conditions, such as glaucoma, lymphoma, and Mormonism. <laughs> Bloomberg News says your online data is quietly leaking. And like most of the appliances in my apartment, I'm just gonna act like it's not there and call nobody. A, a letter to the editor of the New York Times explains what you get when mental illness goes untreated. The answer, a 30 minute news parody comedy show at your local college campus. <laughs> News reports say one in three Americans do not meet national fitness standards. And thank God here in LA, we just exile all those people to Fresno. <laughs> Serena Williams was picked as GQ's 2018's Woman of the Year. Damn, this close, Hillary. A New York Times reporter recounted feeling dread when she returned to American public schools. But if she looked closer, she would have seen that it was written on the syllabus. <laughs> A 78-year-old man fended off a bear attack by punching it on its nose. In related news, a 78-year-old man defied God's sign that his time had come. <laughs> Pope Francis recently said that to gossip is to kill. So look out, Tracy, from eighth grade. You're wanted for triple homicide. Well, Thanksgiving is next Thursday, and traveling back home can be quite difficult. That's right. So here to talk about travel tips for Thanksgiving is our travel expert, Blake Walter, everybody. Yes. Blake, make some noise. Hey, guys. Hey. Uh, so here are some key things to keep in mind to have the most successful and enjoyable Thanksgiving break. So you always want to pack accordingly, like packing a heavy jacket if you're going to the Northeast like me. And make sure to get to the airport with plenty of time because security li lines will be really long this time of year. Oh and very, very important. Don't forget your bulletproof, bulletproof eating bib. <laughs> I'm sorry, bulletproof eating bib? Uh, wh why is it bulletproof? And, and I'm sorry, but um, why do you even need a bib and why do you call it an eating bib? Guys, we've just come out of a very testy midterm. The country is divided and nowhere is that uh, greater is that division than between my aunt Sapphire from Brooklyn and my grandpa Vern from Biloxi, Mississippi. And they will both be at the same table come Thursday. So I need to be re ready for whatever may ensue between these two, including my mother's commemorative serving dish being thrown around. Also, the delicious food can run down your shirt, so the bib is very necessary. I mean, yes, we're in a very divided country, but don't you think there is a way that both sides can have a civil discussion? Dan, do you know what are political issues nowadays? If people's votes should be counted, who should be able to own an automatic assault rifle? 
And whether the president has a pee pee tape or not? Wait, wait, what? Don't forget about the pee pee tape, Joanne. We are past the point of civil discourse, and at this point, where where only one of those who are prepared for the battle will survive. So, so I assume you have more advice on this topic. But. Six segue, Dan. <laughs> so let's say they're arguing, continuing after dinner, into the living room during dessert and football watching. Now what you're gonna wanna do is go to your basement where you already planted your survival kit. Why would you need a survival kit? Water, non-perishable food, a hand crank radio, flashlights, all 14 seasons of Dawson's Creek on DVD. <laughs> this should be enough for you to survive until impeachment or a nuclear holocaust. Now, let's say, God forbid, you, you, you don't get into the basement in time. You're gonna wanna lie flat on the ground and cover your head and wait for the initial explosion. Maybe it's Vern saying he's thankful for Brett Kavanaugh during Grace. Maybe it's Sapphire schwitzing over S Stormy Daniels. The point is, once you see a clearing where both are gasping for air from screaming, you're going to want to take cover from anything that might offer protection. An electric blanket, all seasons of The Cosby Show on DVD, your dog Willoughby, whatever gets between you and the carnage. What did any of that last bit even mean? Yeah, now, you question. may sustain some injuries from the cross, uh, crossfire, whether it be a wishbone impaled into a key vein, or mashed potatoes permanently jammed into the lining of your aorta. Do you know how so to eat So you may want to pack or? extra iodine solution, non-flushable wipes, and all seven seasons of f Family Ties on DVD to stop the bleeding and retain as many limbs as possible. We have got to fire our producers from inviting so many unstable guests onto our show. I now, don't know if how. all else fails, you need to get an escape plan to get back to the safety of your liberal bubble also known as a college campus. Don't try uh, driving or taking the train because every non-politically motivated family member will be trying that. I would suggest three options. Ostrich, those Amazon drones, or on the back of Nicolas Cage because he's always looking to do something. All right, let's, uh, let's get this guy out of here. A any final thoughts, Blake? Well, just remember what's important at Thanksgiving. Be thankful what you have and that you're surrounded by family. Something that not everybody else has. Oh, but that, that was that was quite sweet, actually. Make some <laughs> make some noise for Blake, everybody! Yeah. Wow! Yeah. Look at that! Happy holidays! All right, and back to the news. The fastest growing religion in the United States is no religion, while the second fastest is CrossFit. <laughs> Environmental activists accuse chocolate manufacturer Cadbury of contributing to the impending extinction of orangutans, but remain silent about the overfishing of Swedish fish. <laughs> A woman in Pittsburgh's car was damaged due to a SpaghettiOs assault. Uh-oh. <laughs> NASA's probe is alive and well after its first visit with the sun. And see, Dad, if you're watching this, it's not that hard. <laughs> Facebook is facing scrutiny for hiring a PR firm that wrote negative articles about Google and Apple. And I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Facebook is kind of messed up. It's kind of messed up. Last week, Simone Biles passed a kidney stone, and you guessed it, solid gold. <laughs> In an attempt to cut cost, Walmart has recently ramped up self-checkout. It's called theft. <laughs> a woman from Texas had a divorce party in which she blew up her wedding dress. Small chunks of lace threw, flew through the sky, and Vera Wang cried in a corner. <laughs> a boy took a microwave to school as a backpack. Hot pockets. <laughs> now, folks, recently Amazon named Northern Virginia and New York as the destination for its news headquarters. That's right, and the news has left other towns devastated that were also in the run for the bidding process. Mm -hmm, yes, and here to talk more about Amazon's decision is a representative for one of those towns, Mayor Bob Gunderson of Turtle Lake, North Dakota. <laughs> Bob. Hey. Hey, uh, Bob? It's... Jeff, no. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry? Bob is dead, Dan. Call me Jeff now. It's Jeff Bezos. You, cha you, changed, you changed your name? We changed a lot of things in Turtle Lake, Jillian. <laughs> now, if, if you don't mind, I just prefer to not talk about this whole Amazon thing. It's really a uh, sore subject, OK? <laughs> well, that's, that's why you're on the show. All right, Dan, it. fine. I'll talk about it. It's right. fine. You're pulling my chain. OK. So. Look, we changed a lot of things in Turtle Lakes, and I just don't get how it didn't all amount to, to, to us getting the work. I mean, I changed my name. 
Uh, my wife sent barrels of hate mail to eBay. <laughs> we even bought 1,200 copies of Michael Bublé's Christmas album online. Why did you have to do that last okay. one? I was building a fort. <laughs> Look, <laughs> Jillian, we're all heartbroken over here. Okay, this decision, I mean, I mean, what does New York and Northern Virginia have that Turtle Lake doesn't? Uh, well, it says right here that the average age in Turtle Lake is 52 years old. I mean, well, what better age for forced labor? I, I, I mean, you're telling me you won't have given up by the age of 52? Try age 15. Um, I don't know, Mr. Butler, Jeff. Uh, it seems to me like Turtle Lake doesn't seem to have a whole lot going for it. Jillian, I, I, don't, I don't think you realize the extent to which we took this insane realistic project. I, I, I mean, all across Turtle Lake, we, we were motivated by one goal, and, and one goal only, and that was bringing this Americanized Chinese sweatshop to our doorstep. <laughs> sure, we might not have the most intelligent population, and, and our annual turtle relay each year is either rained out or canceled because both of the runners forgot about it, but <laughs> it's the heart that matters, right? Bob, even after the decision, this is a horrible pitch. But, it, Dan, I'm not done yet. Look, every girl in Turtle Lake since October 2017 has been named Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of math, we just uh, have the kids watch streamed episodes of Jack Ryan. And I even shaved every young man's head in town so they all looked more like Handsome Jeff. <laughs> I'm sorry, Handsome Jeff? Sorry, that's my, uh, that's my street name. We, we actually changed all the names of the streets to, to represent Amazon better and really get the company going. We've got Prime Drive, we've got 15% off Grocery Way, we've got Kindle Boulevard, we've even got Satan Boulevard. S <laughs> Satan Boulevard? I mean, we can just keep calling things Jeff Bezos. Okay, <laughs> but Bob, now that the decision has been made to head to New York and Virginia, aren't you a little worried about these changes in Turtle Lake? Turtle Lake? Why would I care about Turtle Lake? That's a James Franco of a town. <laughs> Bob, aren't you the mayor of Turtle Lake? I never wanted to be the mayor of Turtle Lake. Look, look, it's a horrible job. The only exciting thing going on in this town is the fact that the city council members all have underbites, you know? <laughs> I mean, I ran for mayor of Turtle Lake for the sole purpose of being hired by Amazon. And look where it's gotten Wait, me. Wait, wh why did you do all this work when you could have just applied to work at Amazon? Well, of course. Why, why else would I do it? No, wait, but but you, you could have just applied to, to literally work at Amazon at another location, <laughs> Dan, Bob. I'm from Turtle Lake, North Dakota. My neighbors are tumbleweeds and seasonal depression. <laughs> I mean, there's no store or form of modern civilization for 500 miles in any direction, but... Look, I, I gotta scram, okay? I think I'm gonna change my name to Paramount Pictures. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. You good? Okay. You, all right. Everyone well, hey, Bob, everyone. Bob, everybody. Uh, uh, okay. Um, uh, Milady, shall we engage in the. Oh, indeed, sir. Indeed. Huzzah! Thou are an artless, beef witted coxcomb! Thy insults mean nothing! I spit in your face, thou art scum, ye mangled, dizzy eyed tree frog! All right. We aren't using ye anymore. God, get with the oh, time. Oh, God. You are a peasant. You I'm are. You so would, Dan. I, oh, you would. I'm sorry, I don't. Onwards! Uh, uh, folks, a resurgence in measles. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep going. Yeah, a, re a resurgence in measles and mumps diagnosis is shining new light on the anti-vaxxer movement. Mm -hmm. A group worried about the potential risks of vaccination. Now here with more is anti-vaccination activist Keith O'Malley, yes. everyone. Please welcome Keith. Hi. Hey, hey. Got Keith here. What's All right. going on? Uh, so Keith, what threat do you pose to our general population? Oh, I'm glad you asked, Jillian. Case in point, my cousin Steve. Now, Steve was the picture of good health. Good cholesterol, didn't smoke, drank his Ovaltine, the whole nine yards. And then one day, last April, he went out and he got himself a flu shot. And then very next day, boom, hit by a boat and died. Immunization, my ass. Keith, it, it sounds like your cousin just got hit by a boat. I mean, regardless whether he was vaccinated or not, vaccines have been proven time and time again to present no serious health risks. Mm -hmm. Really, Dan? Who, who told you that? The vaccine companies? Look, just look it up for yourself, buddy, okay? You can find some really enlightening information once you get to, like, the 50th, 60th page of Google search results for vaccines, danger, George Soros. <laughs> In actuality, vaccines are a death trap and a needle. 
do not vaccinate your kids. Now, this is, this is why myself and my business have founded the O'Malley's Baby Casket Emporium Foundation for Vaccine Truth. O'Malley's Baby Casket Emporium. Sorry for your loss. Now, come buy a box. <laughs> Own a baby coffin store? Baby coffin emporium, but, but yeah. <laughs> that's that's all relevant. Back back to vaccines, okay? Did you know, did you know that children who are vaccinated are over 17 times more likely to develop conditions like autism, paralysis, flu pneumonia, and hemsworthoids? According to a recent study, that's why you gotta keep them away from your kids. I'm i I'm sorry. Hemsworthoids? Do you, you, you mean hemorrhoids, no, right? No, 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 no. These are hemsworthoids we're talking about. They're, they're like hemorrhoids, but each one looks like Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> and flumonia? Oh, let's just say that pneumonia and the flu had a one-night stand, and the results are not pretty. I'm, Keith, where, where did this study come from? The, Can we? The O'Malley's Baby Casket Emporium Foundation for Vaccine Truth, obviously. O'Malley's Baby Casket Emporium. Oh God. This month, buy two caskets and get the third one free in our limited time triplet special. Keith, isn't owning a store that sells baby coffins while also advocating for parents not to vaccinate their babies kind of, I don't know, a conflict of interest? Conflict of interest? Conflict of interest? <laughs> Jillian, I ought to fight you. I am doing what's best for these kids. It sounds like you just want to sell them coffins. Okay. First of all, I sell the coffins to their parents, obviously. Okay, kids can't afford coffins, especially deceased ones. And secondly, I'm doing this because I want lower infant mortality. We... What? We saw that, but you just did in the camera. We saw that. Listen, folks. <laughs> vaccines come in needles. Do you know what else comes in needles? Uh, I don't know, how about heroin? <laughs> That's all you need to know. You have two choices ahead of you, folks, all right? One where your child develops all sorts of horrible conditions because you decided to stick him with a needle and fill him with toxic chemicals like some sort of human jelly donut, or one where your child is perfectly healthy, safe, or maybe dying from typhoid, if such a thing even exists. You truly are a philanthropist on a mission, Mr. O'Malley. Can please? What is next? Well, well, right now I'm putting a lot of my money towards the O'Malley ba uh, Baby Casket Emporium Center for a Future Without Bike Helmets, aimed at fighting the negative effects of helmets on developing brains. O'Ma O'Malley's oh Baby Casket Emporium. It's like buying a crib, but it's forever. All right, folks. Keith O'Malley, everybody. O'Malley. Oh, Business genius right there. Business genius. Folks, Vermont, does it exist or is it just more of the nonsense from the mainstream media? Mm -hmm. More on this after the break. <laughs> The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Stop the texts. Stop the wrecks. It's our turn now. <laughs> we got you. Oh my gosh. Okay, and we're back. How did we not know we were back? <laughs> Hi. <clears throat> Folks, the news. <clears throat> Catherine McGregor, the star of Little House on the Prairie, died this week at age of at age 93. But my only question is, what's the rent on that? Casey Musgrave stole the show at the Country Music Awards. And if anyone sees her, she was headed west on the I-95 last night. And we need to get that show back like right now. <laughs> the FDA moved forward with its plans to someday ban menthol cigarettes. It's like they want me to turn to heroin or something. <laughs> well, Thanksgiving is this Thursday, just in time to hear what your Grandpa Harold thought about Crazy Rich Asians. 
<laughs> Stan Lee passed away this week and joined the Bible cinematic universe. <laughs> A list of the top 10 most unsafe toys was released before the holiday season, also known as a list of the 10 sickest toys for this holiday season. <laughs> A plane took a nosedive right after takeoff because of an autopilot error, which makes me wonder, how long are they waiting before they turn on autopilot? <laughs> France and Germany's leaders were mistaken for a married couple at an event, which is just rude because everyone knows Angela Merkel is married to the Deutschland. <laughs> The FBI is reporting an increase in hate crimes, but don't worry, there's also an increase in love crimes. Yeah, right? <laughs> right? Come on. KFC released a new streetwear collection in case you wanted your fit to be, you know, greasier. <laughs> a man was banned from Disney World after waving a Trump 2020 banner, while many just thought it was a new feature of the Tower of Terror. <laughs> A father sang to his three-year-old daughter as he evacuated a California wildfire in what witnesses called beautiful and the daughter called annoying as hell. <laughs> Kmart has plans to close its last stores in Chicago because honestly, it's tired of the wind. <laughs> I'll do it. Up next, we have a 420 guest. Jeez, 420, what terrible vision. That's. <laughs> That's right. Due to more and more states legalizing recreational marijuana, black market dealers are growing increasingly concerned that they will be run out of business. Mm -hmm. And to give us an insider's perspective, please welcome on Emily Wilson, the dealer from the alley behind the studio. Emily. <laughs> hey, guys. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I said I was going to pull it together for the show. But <laughs> well, Emily, 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 Emily what, what's, what's wrong? I am. Um, I got broken up with recently, and I'm not handling it well. I'm so sorry to hear that. I, he's turned 21, so he said it was time to move on. Same thing happened with my dad. <laughs> Did you see it coming at all? I mean, the signs were all there. You know, he wasn't texting me as much, and when he did, he always wanted me to deliver. They always do. <laughs> but it's just been really hard for me to deal with. Like, I know I shouldn't care, but Trent was one of the good ones, you know? He came over all the time, and he never stayed longer than the appropriate 30 minutes. And I actually liked spending that time with him. Oh, a whole 30 minutes. Ugh, oh, that is so hard to find. <laughs> right? All the other guys who still caught for me are like weirdo hippies who won't stop it talking about San Francisco in the 70s, or that guy who tried to convince me that he was Willie Nelson. It's so tiring selling to these kinds of people. Wait, wait. <laughs> Trent was just one of your customers? Hell yeah, don't give him free weed just because he's your boyfriend. Or, sorry, uh, ex-boyfriend. Oh, uh, no, Trent was just a customer. My boyfriend goes to UC Santa Cruz, and he's only into uppers. Wait, I'm sorry. If Trent was just a customer, then why are you so upset? Because this keeps happening to me. All my normal customers are leaving me for dispensaries. And they say it's because they're new and easily available and they want a greater variety and not to be robbed. <laughs> wow, this, this is... <laughs> This is actually surprisingly relevant to why we brought you on. Oh my God. So are, are you saying that legalization has had an effect on your business then? Well, yes and no. You know, there's enough old fashioned stoner dads and middle schoolers who I can rip off to keep me in business. But it's just not the same. Like, God, I cannot talk to Doug about his Grateful Dead cover band one more time. <laughs> Capitalism has taken all the fun out of drug dealing. So, so are you thinking of getting out of the game? I don't know. I don't want to make like a rash decision just because I'm grieving Trent, but I'll be honest, I, I've seriously considered just going back to selling coke. Mm. <laughs> yeah, well, we're all thinking of you in this hard time. Thanks, thanks for coming on. Yeah, yeah. And uh, let, 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 me, let me know about the, uh, the coke for a friend. <coughs> Um, up next, we have breaking news coming out of South L.A. That's right. A local girl has been terrorizing the area with uncouth rhetoric. Take a look. <laughs> Jeez. 
Shocking news came earlier this afternoon as two college sophomores discovered a horrifying secret about their friend, Samantha Davis. We were eating and I asked Sam if her parents were coming for family weekend and that's when it happened. She, she said, she said, yeah, I, I can't, can't wait, wait to, to see, see my daddy. Yeah, when I first heard Sam say daddy, you know, I was into it. You know, I like freaky chicks. Hell yeah. But when I found out she was talking about her actual dad, I was like, what? <laughs> like, like, are you serious? Like, I had to dump her. I had to dump her. You only say that in the bedroom. We thought she meant sexually at first. Yeah, so we were like, do your thing, girl. Get that D. We would never kink shame anybody. But when we realized she was talking about her biological dad, we couldn't be friends anymore. After talking to other students on campus, it's clear that any sane person would agree. Sam's word choice was just gross. I don't see what the big deal is. What else would you call your daddy? So you also use that word? Yeah, it's 2018. How else are you supposed to afford college without a sugar daddy? No, she was talking about her actual father. What? Is she like some sort of psychopath or something? With all this outrage, we knew it was time to go straight to the source to find out what was going through her demented head. I don't get why everyone's freaking out. Since when did daddy become a sexual thing? Kids say it all the time. She is right about that. However, studies show a decline in the usage of the term after childhood, with only 2% of college-aged women using the word. And two-thirds of those women were homeschooled. <laughs> yeah, the daddy thing. Uh, yeah, I don't know why she still calls me that. Um, we thought therapy would help. It really didn't. Well, there you have it, folks. Call your father dad. Papa, El Padre, anything but daddy. I'm Alice Booker, breaking down the news. I'm saying it's Adam and Eve, not Adam not and the Steve. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I didn't mean to. Oh. oh my gosh, and we're back. And we're back. Hi. And we're back. Hi. Okay. Hi, um, escape rooms have become a popular activity for friends and groups of people. Here today is one man who went against the status quo and completed an entire escape room alone. Most people would say it's impossible, but Henry Hillsong proved it's not. Welcome, Henry, everyone. <laughs> So Henry, we're gonna get right to it. Tell us about this accomplishment. What type of escape room did you do? Yeah. Oh, well, um, uh, it was really dark and there were these people wearing black masks. I'm pretty sure they were red herrings though. They never gave me any clues on how to get out. Oh, that sounds different. Uh, how long did it take you to escape? Uh, it didn't take me that long. Four days. I didn't have any food or water. Four days? I yeah. thought the whole point of escape room was time limit. Like, how you only have an hour or something? Yeah, it was a really good deal. No, hold, hold, hold on, hold on. Let, let's backtrack a second. Now, how did you exactly escape this room? Uh, you know, the police asked me the same question. I'm but, sorry? You know, the, I, the, wait, the police uh, I just were probably involved? forgot. I'm I, sorry. I, I, it's okay. Uh, no, wow, I'm fine. much more questions. That's a developing story, folks. We'll get back to that later. <clears throat> oh. I think... Oh, okay, I guess we're... Oh, oh, we can do it? Oh, okay, great, okay, okay, okay. All right, wait, hold on. Um, we gotta get ready. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, thou shalt audition for the most righteous of medieval times performance venues. And go. I am thou finest of knights, a Julian Ruvalcava. <laughs> Second finest. <laughs> okay. And, and I most desirous thou coveted role of Grand Duke of all kingdom. Huzzah! Oh, and cease! Well, my fairest lady, the most gracious performance of, of all the land, besides mine. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, so which of the most gracious lands is hiring? Okay, um, New Jersey. Oh, hell no. Oh, no, God, no. <laughs> no. Not that. Jeez. Okay. Well, <clears throat> this that. has been the breakdown. And that may have been the news. Huzzah! <laughs> How did, like, can I, can we watch it? Okay, my, my, fairest, my, 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 my fairest lady, what is your opinion on the situation in Syria? What? Don't Sorry, too much, that. too much. I shouldn't have done Too much, that. too much. Ask me like... Wasn't properly formatted. Mm. Aha. You silly scoundrel. 